Jai Shri Shri Navadit Tam Parikrama Ki Jai Jai Shri Rudra Dvip Ki Jai Rudra Dvip Ki Jai Kola Dvip Ki Jai Kola Dvip Ki Jai Jai Chari Sampradaya Ki Jai Chari Acharya Ki Jai Jai Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Bhuvana Pavana Harinama Samkirtana Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Srila Gurudeva Ki Jai Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Padasto Charasata Shri Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaja Ki Jai Srila Gurudeva Ki Jai Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Jaya Sachinandana Jai Gaura Hari Nityananda Pranadana Nadia Bihari Jaya Sachinandana Jai Gaura Hari Nityananda Pranadana Nadia Bihari Jaya Sachinandana Jai Gaura Hari Nityananda Pranadana Nadiya Bihari Jai Satsinandana Jai Gaura Hari Nityananda Pranadana Nadiya Bihari Jai Satsinandana Jai Gaura Hari Jai Sachi Nandana Jai Gaula Hari Jai Sachi Nandana Jai Gaula Hari Sachi Mata Pranadana Nadiya Bihari who has brought us here to this very special place where the mood of separation has now uh, been inaugurated by Mahaprabhu. By his taking sannyas and leaving Navadvip, completing his 24 years of pastimes as uh, Nimai Pandit. Nimai Pandit. Here in Navadweep, he was a very proud Brahmin, scholar, Pandit, Nimai Pandit. But he attracted everyone's heart. Everyone's heart who were completely absorbed in him. Because he is Krishna, actually. Actually, Lord Chaitanya, he is Krishna himself. He is Sham He is that cowherd boy, the son of Mother Yashoda, the son of Maharaj. This, this Nimai. He is that person. This is a very confidential understanding to know who is this Vishwambhar, this Nimai, who is he? 
What is his identity? There are many people, they know uh, about this person, Chaitanya. They know Chaitanya. They've heard about him. But they have different ideas who he is. Some they think he is only a very great devotee. Most people, ordinary people, they think like this about Lord Chaitanya. Yes, very great saint. Very great saint. In India there are so many saints. Many. Uh, and if you go around India, you'll hear of so many saints that have appeared over hundreds and thousands of years. And when they hear about this person, Chaitanya, they think, oh yes, he was a great devotee, great devotee of Krishna. Uh, but those persons, they do not have full knowledge. They have very partial, limited knowledge. Who is Lord Chaitanya? That means that they have never heard about his life. Neither have they heard his teachings. Only they heard, yes, he was a great devotee. He chanted Hare Krishna. He started a movement which was to rebel against the uh, government of this Kazi, Chan Kazi, in Navadvi, marched with his Kirtan party. So he was a social reformer. Social reformer. They think like that about him. They don't know who he actually is. But in all the Vedic Shastras, the actual identity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is mentioned in many, many places. But it is mentioned in a hidden way. Hidden. Somewhat hidden. So, why? Why should it be hidden? Why should it be hidden? In Lord uh, Nishringadev's pastimes, when Prahlad Maharaj is offering prayer to Lord Nishringadev, he also calls him uh, by the name of Triyuga. And also Chana Avatar. So Chana means covered. Covered. Disguised. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a disguised incarnation and he wanted it to be like this. Why? Because he has come for a specific purpose. Actually, many purposes he has come for. Some of those purposes are for his own purpose. And some of those purposes are for others, to benefit others. Therefore, he is, his appearance is divided into two reasons, internal and external. And of these two, the internal reasons are prominent, more important. The external reasons are of secondary importance. They're very, very important, but they are secondary. Why? Because the first reason is the primary reason is for his own purpose. And this is the nature. This is the absolute enjoying nature of the absolute supreme personality of God. He is the supreme enjoyer and taster of all rasa. Rasika, she, rasika Shekar Krishna. Huh? Rasika Shekar Krishna Parama Karunya. So, 
first, Krishna is the taster of all the rasa, rasika shekar. Secondly, he is paramakarunya, supremely merciful. Parama karunya, supremely merciful. These two reasons, these two aspects of himself are the reasons why he descends into this material world. For these two reasons. Uh, to taste ras and to give mercy. The first reason is for himself. Second reason is for all others. Try to understand this point very deeply. Uh, this is the introduction to the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita. If you can grasp and understand this point very deeply, then you can begin to understand and appreciate Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is his leelas? Why did he appear in this world? Then you can read the Chaitanya Charitamrita if you can understand this. So first of all, Krishna's Rasika Shekar. Uh, he is the topmost expert taster of all rasa. You know that we all were tiny little Krishnas. Each one of us. We are individual little Krishnas. How is that? Because we are his vivinamsha. We are his amsha. Amsha means part, little parts. So because Krishna is a person, and he's an individual person, who has an individual ego, that I am Krishna, so therefore we also do. Each one of us are individual souls, and we all have our own individual sense of identity because we are his amsha. And because Krishna is self-centered, right? He's self-centered. He exists for his own self. Therefore, we also exist for our own self. In this world, we are all trying to be happy for ourselves. We don't wake up in the morning every day and think about how we can make everyone else happy. Huh? We're always aware of whether I'm happy or whether I'm not happy and what do I have to do to become happy. Isn't it? Every day? Are we not preoccupied by this? Or maybe one of you have become very selfless and all you can think of day and night is how to benefit someone else. No. It is not the fact. Why? Because it is natural for us to think of ourselves. Why? Because Krishna is the Supreme Self and He thinks of Himself. You know that Krishna has, He has the right, you know, the right to be the Supreme Enjoyer because everything that exists is for Him. Understand? Just like if you create your living condition. You have an apartment where you live. Do you not arrange everything for you? Oh, I will put this nice piece of furniture here. I will hang these kind of curtains here. It will create a nice atmosphere for me. Is that not true? Yes? Of course, if you're married or you have children or whatever, you also have to think about them, right? But you're really very much uh, thinking, this is my house and I am the proprietor of this house. I am the proprietor of this house. Uh, I am the proprietor of this house. We think like this, yes? Yes or no? Yes. Answer me. Yes. Yes. So, so we all think. 
Where is this ego coming from? That we want to arrange everything for our happiness. Why? Why is every single living entity like this? Because Krishna is like this. And we are part and parcel of Krishna. Now, understanding this, there's still something wrong. There's something wrong. Because we're not happy in this world even though we try <laughs> and we we really make every possible endeavor throughout our life from the time that we're born till the time that we die to become happy but we don't it doesn't work it doesn't happen it doesn't happen so there's something is wrong but it's not wrong that we should want to be happy that's not wrong. This is our privilege. This is our right. And we have this right because Krishna has this right. Understand? Krishna is, has the supreme right to be happy. And therefore, because He is the supreme and no one else is, no one else is the supreme, only Him. There's only one of Krishna. There's not two or ten or a million Krishnas. There's only one Krishna. Do you know that? Do you know that there's only one Krishna? <laughs> huh? But why don't you ask me, but wait a minute. There's so many other Krishnas. There's Ram and there's Varaha and there's Nishringadev. And are you going to ask me that? How can you say there's only one Krishna? Incarnation, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's only one. I'm saying that there's only one Krishna. Because we have so many clothes, we can change the clothes. Krishna also can change his form. Actually, Krishna is not like clothes. He's the same person. Clothes is something that you wear. It's more like the moon. Hmm. The moon is the same moon, is it not? Mm -hmm. When you see it full, in a few days it will be full. And in a few days it will also be partial moon. Like this. But is it a different moon that we're looking at? No, it's the same moon. But you're seeing it only partially or more or more or you're seeing it fully. Similarly, Krishna is only one. There's only one absolute supreme being. That's all. Not two. That's why Krishna is called Advai Gyan Paratattva. Advai Gyan Paratattva. Now I'm going to have you repeat and learn this word. Everyone repeat after me. Advai. 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 Gyan. 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 Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Para. 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 Tattva. 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 Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Advai Gyan. Advai Gyan. Para Tattva. Para Tattva. Advai Gyan 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 Para Tattva. Good. Now I'm going to explain the meaning of each word. Meaning of each word. Okay. And I'll also test you. So listen carefully. What is the meaning of this word? Anyone can say Advai? Advai. 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 What is the meaning? Anyone can tell me? Advai. One without second. 
One without a second. One. You were in Vrindavan when I was giving this class. Advai. Advai. So, Dvai means two. Because when you count in this language here, ek, do, or ek, dui, like this. So, Dvai in Sanskrit means two. Dvai. Very beautiful, Gornita. <laughs> so, Dvai means two. And Advai means what? Means no. Huh? No. What does two. Advai mean? No. Not a second. Not, not two. two. Not two. So if there's not two, then what is there? One. 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 Eh? If it's not two, it's one. So Advai. Only one. So now, so Krishna. Krishna is Advai. Advai. He's Advai because he's only one mm. and not two. And Para Tattva, Para means supreme, supermost, supermost, topmost, Para. And Tattva means what? Truth. Truth. Truth or principle. The supreme existing reality, Tattva. Tattva means the existing reality. So, everything that exists, everything that exists, including ourselves, including the universe, everything, it is part of that super most existing reality. That means para tattva. Para tattva. Okay. You got it. Paratattva. So, Krishna is the supreme tattva, the supreme reality. Everything that exists, uh, it is part of that supreme reality, Krishna. But yet, in this statement, it says that Everything that exists is that supreme reality. Advai Gyan. That means non-dual, non-dual knowledge. Knowledge, Gyan. Gyan means knowledge. Consciousness. Consciousness. You cannot have knowledge without consciousness. So the supreme reality, Paratattva, is Advai Gyan. I want to tell you that Srila Gurudev, you're all disciples of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, you should know that he has very explicitly explained what I'm telling you to all of us and told us we must learn this. We must learn this fact because this is called Vedanta. Vedanta means the conclusion of all knowledge. And this place here, this place where we are, this is the place where the four Vaishnavacharyas came. All the four Vaishnavacharyas came here at different times in the past. 800 years ago, Madhvacharya came here. 1,000 years ago, Shankaracharya came. Uh, Ramanujacharya came. Vishnu Swami came. Nimbaditya came. They all came here to Navadweep. Why? Because this place, Navadweep, this is the supreme abode. This is the supreme topmost dham of the supreme absolute reality. And those acharyas came into this world to teach who is that supreme reality. So they all came here to Navadvip Dham. <coughs> and when they came here, oh, they had the good fortune of worshipping Goranga Mahaprabhu. He appeared to them even though his pastimes of appearing in this world had not yet 
happened, but when they came, he manifested himself. As we've been doing this parikrama, you've heard pastimes of these different islands. And in these different islands, different rishis, you know, different saints, they had the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hundreds of years before he came, thousands of years before he came, and even millions of years before he came. Because this is the eternal dam. This land that we're sitting on here is not destroyed at the time of the devastation of the universe. At the end of Lord Brahma's day, there is a partial devastation of our universe at the end of his day. That means at the end of every 8,420,000,000 years. So Lord Brahma's day and night ends, and there's a devastation. So, but this land of Navadvip Dam, it appears to be a limited place in West Bengal, next to a river that's flowing, and there's some fields and agricultural fields and forests like this, but no, Navadvip Dam is billions of miles. Do you know that? No, you don't. But you heard it the other day. You heard this in Surabhikunj, the first place we went to on the Parikrama. Surabhikunj. You remember that place? It was a big, they were just constructing this big pavilion. Yeah. So that place is the place of Surabhi, the cow, who came after Lord Indradev was uh, apologizing to Krishna for trying to destroy Vrindavan. And then Krishna lifted. So that Surabhi cow came there to that island, this place called Godruma, and she wanted to worship Krishna there. And there was another Rishi who was floating in the waters of the devastation of the universe. Yeah? And there was nothing but water. Nothing but water. This is Markandeya Rishi. Markandeya Rishi had a benediction, he could not die for seven kalpas, seven days of Lord Brahma. So that means he had to endure being here during the devastation. So he was floating and floating and being tossed here and there in the waters of the devastation, but he couldn't die. You understand? Understand? So now, Markandeya Rishi, he saw in the distance this effulgent, effulgent light in this effulgent land, and somehow he washed up onto the shore. And where was that? This Navadvip Dam. And then Surabhi saw him and pulled him in ashore. And then he was very exhausted. He was very exhausted. It was very difficult for him to be floating in the waters for thousands of years. So he was very hungry also. And then he said, Oh Surabhi, please give me your milk. Save my life. Yeah. Even though he couldn't die. Uh, but he felt like it. Uh, so then she fed her milk and he became revived and nourished. And now she began to tell to him, this place where you have come, oh, this is the supreme home. In the future, Lord Goranga, in this Kali, Kali Yuga, Lord Goranga, he will come here. And he will manifest his pastimes of distributing praying. Huh? And you will also take birth in those pastimes. Mark and Deirish. And she described, you see, this Navadvip Dam, it is a vast, vast expanse of beautiful effulgent land and forest and trees and water. And she described that it's, I forget how many billions of miles, it says in Navadip Dhammahatma. Billions. But this appears to be only 32, 32 miles. But no, no, it's the unlimited, unlimited dam. Those who can see the dam, they see this. They see this. They see this effulgent, expansive land and this water, all transcendental. And the tree that she was sitting under was many miles, this huge banyan tree, many, many miles. So such places exist, and they're existing right here, but beyond our vision, 
Why? Because our vision is covered by Maya. You heard it earlier that Maya is covering the vision of the Dham. But when Maya Devi, who is a devotee uh, of Krishna, when she desires to lift this covering from the Jiva's eyes, Prodhamaya, her name is Prodhamaya, then the jiva can see the actual Dham. So this is what we are hoping for on our Navadi Parikrama, that we can just get one tiny little experience of where we actually are, that we do through hearing. So Krishna came here, and he is only one Krishna, not two. He is the supreme truth, uh, supreme truth, supreme reality. And he came here in the form of Sachi Nandan Gaur Hari. Why? For his own purpose. Because he's the supreme enjoyer. Uh, so now, I'm going back to this point to complete what I'm telling here. That Krishna, he was living here in Navadvip Dham as Nimai Pandit. And he was performing his pastimes as a young boy, as a baby, as a youth, just like Krishna. In Braj, he also performed his pastimes as a baby, as a child, as a youth, like that. So this Navadvip Dham is non different than Vrindavan, than Braja because the same person and the same dhamma but there's one speciality of this dhamma as a, as compared to the vrindavan dhamma and what is that one speciality you know huh yes magnanimity Odaryata. Odarya. Odarya means very very munificent, charitable, giving, giving, giving. This is the mood of this dham. It's the sweet dham of Vrindavan, non-different. But yet there's the special mood of this dham. That's why we come here. That's why all acharyas have come here, to get this special mercy. Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, who is Samadhi, we, I don't know if you went there yet, but you definitely should go before you go back and visit his samadhi. Our great Acharya. He was the Vaishnava Sarvabhoma. Sarvabhoma means the greatest, uh, the supreme monarch, like a king, like a leader of all the Vaishnavas. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he came here from Braja. He was living in Braj, in Vrindavan. But he came here. And he came here for what reason? As all of our acharyas have come to, to receive this Gaur Prem. Because through this mercy of Gaur Prem, then all Radha Krishna Prem can come. Everything, can all full installment can be given to the jiva by the mercy of this dham, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya in this dham. We don't know these things. We come here because we know that there's something good that we'll get by coming. But we don't know how good. We don't know how good it will be, how high, how special. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived here 24 years, just across the Ganga. That was his house, with living there with Sachi Mata. No, not here. <laughs> they tell, these people they're telling. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur did not accept. He did not accept that Gauranga Mahaprabhu was born here on this side of the Ganga. No. But they're telling, even at that time, 200 years even ago, they were telling. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur could not accept. Why? Because of the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the Chaitanya Bhagavat and in many of the scriptures, 
it is told that he was on that side. So therefore he did research, very extensive research he did. And he studied ancient maps also, ancient maps from that time. And he inquired so much, he studied all the different Shastras. Then he concluded, must be there. And then we went to his house, you know, the house of Bhaktivinoda Thakur we went to the other day. So from that place, he was looking across the Jalangi, and in that place where Mayapur is, he saw an effulgent building, tall, beautiful, splendorous, and light coming in all directions. He had a vision of that. Then the next day he went there, and he found a mound with all Tulsis growing on it. And by inquiring from the local people, he understood they called this place Niyapur. Niyapur. But it was a, a modification of the name Mayapur, which is mentioned in the Shastras, Mayapur. Then they, he found that their tradition, their oral tradition, was in telling that, oh, this mound here, uh, with all Tulsis, it is, it is called the, that very special place. Uh, but no one will build anything here for hundreds of years. So now Bhaktivinoda Thakur, from this, he began to conclude, yes, now I have found the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. Because the Ganga is always shifting, shifting. And it sometimes floods the whole area. So over hundreds of years, it shifts hundreds of times. Even in the years that I've been coming here, uh, like right now, it's kind of steep. And you see all these sandbags here? That wasn't here years ago. It was way over there. There was a long beach, you know. So in this way, the Ganga shifted, and this is the will of the Lord. Na, so, Nitai, the Lord Nityananda, he told when he was bringing Jiva Goswami, he said, "This dam, uh, it will become hidden for some time, and then again, the glories of the dam will be revealed after 500 years." So now we see. Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared and he revealed that place. But how did he know? How could he, how could he get complete verification so that it would be confirmed? Yes, this is the birthplace. So what did he do? He brought. He brought his Guru Dev, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, from here. And he brought him with a whole procession of very elevated Vaishnavas. At that time, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was 144 years old. And he was also all bent over and almost blind. His eyes, eyelids were drooping like this. But he was most Param Vaishnav. And at that time, he, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, was carried in a basket. He had one servant. Servant, I forget the servant's name. What? No. So this servant was carrying him. When they came there with Kirtan, and they came to that place, then he manifested the most extraordinary symptoms of ecstasy and even though he was crippled he jumped out of the basket and began leaping in the air jai satinandan jai satinandan this is the place of my lord this is the place of my lord so that personality he is our guru in our line he confirmed it uh, therefore, uh, when we chant his pranam mantra, uh, say, Kora vir bhava bhume stvam nirdeshta sajjana riya vaishnava sarva bhoma shri jagannathayate namaha 
I offer my nama, my pranams, to the lotus feet of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, uh, who has uh, revealed, hmm, who has pointed out nirdeshta, nirdeshta, gora avirbhava bhumestvam. Oh, you have pointed out the avirbhava, the place of appearance of gora. Uh, you have pointed that out. Nirdeshta means to, yes, this is it. This is confirmed. Uh, uh, sajjana Priya. Sajjana Priya means that for the Sajjans, Sajjan means the topmost perfect personalities. Sajjan. Those personalities, you are very dear to them. Sajjana Priya. And you are the Vaishnav Sarvabhoma. You are the leader of all the Vaishnavas. So such a great personality in our line. Once, Jagannath, did you hear this pastime of, of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj? Today? Did you hear? Jumping up six feet. Huh? Jumping up six feet. No, no. Another. When he was... Some person wanted to test him to see if he was a very realized person. They wanted to test. So they came to him. And in Vrindavan, in Vrindavan, that means a couple thousand miles away, okay, in Vrindavan, uh, there is a place. And it's near to the Jamuna, where we have our Gopinath Bhavan, not far from there. Dear Samir, this place, not far from the place of the Ras Lila, Vamshibhat. So there was a whole group of Tulsis there. And some goats came. Goat, you know. And they were eating the Tulsi. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was here. He was here. And in his bhajan, he was took his stick, his stick, and he was beating the ground. And he was saying, "Oh, the goats! They are eating the tulsi. Drive them away! Drive them away!" Nobody could understand. <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> but then they understood that. Oh. And he was explaining that, that dear Samir, there are Tulsis and the goats are eating them. Then he, uh, this person who was trying to test, went uh, somehow had communication with Vrindavan, and he discovered that at that moment, when Jagannath Das Babaji was doing that, it was happening there. It was happening there. The goats were eating the Tulsi. They reported, yes, that, that was happening. So then he understood all perfected souls, perfected Vaishnava. And also, you know that he was very fond of all creatures in the Dham. Yeah, all the dogs, the cows. He considered the animals of the Dham to be very worshipable, worshipable living entities. Yeah. Why? Because he sees the actual Dham. In Vrindavan, where Krishna, you know, in Vrindavan, Krishna has so many animals in the forest like cows and peacocks and cuckoo birds and all. And they're eternal associates of Krishna. So they're worshipable. Mm. Yes. Similarly, this Navadip Dham being non-different, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had full vision of the Dham. So his personal servant would all, all always bring him his lunch on a plate. And Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he would take Prashadam sitting on the floor. But there was one dog that was in their ashram where he was staying. And the dog had puppies. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he would call for the puppies to come. Come, 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 come. 
And because he was blind, he would uh, feel. And he, Jagannath Das Babaji would not eat anything until the puppies had come and they were sitting around his plate and he would count them, one, two, three, four. And then when they were all there, then he would take prasadam. And they would also take. So, so then his servant became very, you know, and the dogs are eating off the plate at the same time. So he was feeling very hurt by this. And he complained. Oh, oh, what he did was, oh, yeah, the next day he, he kept the puppies away. And then Jagannath Das Babaji went, where are the puppies? Where are the puppies? Bring the puppies. Huh? And then he would say, oh, oh, Gurudev. I cannot tolerate. They are eating off your plate. No, bring the puppies. And until he brought the puppies, he wouldn't eat. He would count to see that they're all there. Then he would take. And then he said, then Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, he said, these, these are not ordinary puppies. They are not ordinary dogs. Uh, these are puppies of the Holy Dham. Mm. These are puppies of the Dham. So that was his vision. Also, once, Shil Jagannathas, many people would give him pranami, donations. So, once he took that money and he instructed, go and buy rasgulas. You know rasgulas? Very expensive, milk sweets. Buy hundreds of rasgulas. And now go and feed to all the dogs. And then the, it was suggested to him, oh, but Maharaj, maybe better that we should feed to the Babajis. There are so many saintly Vaishnavas. We should feed. We should call them and then we can have a feast and feed them. Why give to the dogs? Then he said, ah, oh, so many imposters, so many false, cheating, cheating rascals. They dress like sadhu, they put on tilak, uh, but then they have illicit relations with women. They do so much nonsense, smoking beedis and taking ganja and everything else. They are, they are disgrace. Huh? They are disgrace. Better to feed the animals in the dam. You will get more sukriti, more benefit to feed the animals. He told me. So like this, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he was the most highly realized personality. And he was the spiritual master of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So we cannot imagine how exalted was he, because Bhakti Vinod Thakur is the spiritual master of all. Huh? But yes, he is his guru. So on this day, we have the opportunity to go to his samadhi. And there's a very beautiful uh, deity of him there at his samadhi. Like that. So on this day, we we hear about Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, we hear about Maya Devi and how she covers and Proda Maya and Vridha Shiv, uh, Vridha Shiv, how these personalities are protecting the Dham. From anyone that wants to come into the Dham and they are unqualified, then Dham is hidden from them. And we come here and we hear about the four Vaishnavacharyas and how they understood Vedanta. And we hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Leela of taking sannyas. So why did he take sannyas? Why did he leave? He was so happy performing Harinam Samkirtan. Thousands of bhaktas were coming with him. He was absorbed in Krishna Prem, tasting and relishing this nectar of Krishna Prem. Huh? So then why? Why did he leave his beautiful, very, very devoted, chaste wife, Vishnu Priya Devi, his devoted mother who had no one else? Why did he leave home? Why did he leave home and take some rest? This is very cruel, don't you think? Isn't that cruel? Isn't that heartless and cold and cruel? To leave his 
young wife, 16 years old, uh, and his old mother, <coughs> she has no one else. Isn't that cool? Didn't, didn't Nimai Pandit exhibit a pastime of cruelty, not giving any mercy? What was it? What is the fact? No, the fact is, this was his supremely merciful pastime. How was it supremely merciful? Can you tell me how? How and why was this supremely merciful? Yeah. Yes, that's one reason. If you want, you wanted to travel and to preach more. And it's, you can only travel if you're free, without any attachment. So that's also true. You see, here in Navadweep, Mahaprabhu, from around the age of 16 till 24, after he took initiation from Ishwar Puri, hmm, then he became mad mad in Krishna Prem and he came back to Navadweep from Goya. He had gone to Goya to bring the ashes of his father, Jagannath Mishra. This is the tradition. They would travel to East Bengal, Goya, and there they would worship uh, the, the, the form of Lord Vishnu there and they would perform shrad ceremony for the passed away family member. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also did that. He went there but there he met Ishwara Puri. Sri Ishwara Puri became his guru and gave him initiation in Krishna Mantra. At that time, it appeared that his Krishna Prem was being awakened. And when he came back to Navadweep, now he was completely different than he was before. He was completely converted into a Mahabhagwat Vaishnava. Before that, he didn't show these symptoms. He was like a proud scholar. Huh? But now he showed becoming a Vaishnava. Oh, so now, um, Advaita Charya, Shivas Thakur, all, oh, they were so happy. That, oh, look at our Nimai, our Vishambar. Now he's become a Vaishnava. Now he will lead us. So then his pastimes began for around six years, six or eight years, preaching the Samkirtan movement. Uh, and then at one point at the age of 24, his moods of separation from Krishna were growing higher and higher. Uh, moods of separation, more and more deep, more and more intense. He could not tolerate this burning because in his heart he's tasting the moods of love of Srimati Radharani. So, for that purpose, he wanted to take sannyas, to leave everything and go to Krishna, you see. But, also, there were so many persons in Navadri who did not properly respect him. Hmm? They didn't properly respect him. Hmm? And he wanted to capture them. He wanted to give them this Krishna Prem. So to capture them, he saw that they were escaping. Therefore he decided, I will take sannyas. Now they see me as ordinary person. But if I take sannyas, they will have to give respect. And if they give respect, they will be delivered. So for giving mercy to those offenders, he took sannyas and to give mercy to all jivas. He took sannyas to demonstrate how if you want to go to Krishna, huh, you have to live like this, absorbed, completely detached from this material world. You have to give up your attachment in this world and you have to become absorbed in worshiping Krishna day and night, day and night, day and night. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed the example, and that was his mercy, Parama Karuni, his mercy for the Jesus. So like this, we came here today on this Parikrama, and we had this opportunity to touch the dust of these places where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu swam across on that evening. 
swam across the Ganga on a cold night uh, in the winter season. And then, weeping and crying for Krishna, he went all the way along the bank of the Ganga on this side, and he went to Kat Katwa. I'm not sure how many miles, but maybe 15 miles, 20 miles, like that. He went to Katwa. And there he met Keshav Bharati, who was sannyasi, and he took sannyas and shaved his head. And all the residents of Navadweep were weeping and weeping and weeping that our Nimai has gone, our Nimai has gone. Huh? And therefore, after Lord Chaitanya, after he left, after he left Navadweep Dam, they named this place Nirdoy. Because Nirdoy means no mercy. He's not giving mercy to us. He has gone away. He's gone away. No mercy. Please be merciful. So that's that's why this place is called Nidoy or Nirdoy Ghat. Nirdoy. So bathing here in this place, we have the opportunity to remember these pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the mercy of our beloved Srila Guru. Gaur Pranam. Shri Sachinandan Gaur Hari Ki Jai Shri Sachinandan Gaur Hari Ki Sanyas Lila Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki Harinam Samkirtan Ki Shri Naditam Parikrama Ki Shri Ganga Devi Ki Shri Ganga Devi Ki Shri Rudra Dvip Ki Shri Kola Dvip Ki Samavira Bhaktarinda Ki Nitai Gaur Pramanande Maharaj, is it from that side swim to here or? What? Mah that time the river is very broad. Yeah. Mm. Mahaprabhu is from no, that no. side. I just told that this Ganga is always shifting. Yeah. Of course. Always shifting. Huh? So we don't know. From Mayapu. Okay. But it's on this side of the Ganga. From Mayapu swim on here. Yes. You can see okay. his birthplace just over there. Yeah, yeah, okay. From my boat to swing to here, from here. What? Yeah, yeah from that yeah. side to this side. Yeah. Huh? Yes. From that side to my boat, there's a boat to the boat. Here, there's a boat. Not from that side. From that side, from that side, from that side, from that side. Oh, but he's born in my boat, right? From that side, there's a boat. Why can't he come from here? We can't come from here. We can't come from here. We can't come from here. Shri Harinam 